but uh, Congress is uh, considering pulling the plug on the uh, James Webb Space Telescope, which is the success of Don't get me started. No, I want to get you started. This is the, the, the successor to the Hubble, and they say it can peer into the universe and maybe see the moment when the universe was born. I don't even know how that happens. Uh, but it costs $6.8 billion, which, by the way, the same amount that it costs to be in Afghanistan for one month. So either way, we're sinking money into a black hole. <laughs> um, <laughs> But they're thinking of pulling the plug on this, and it just says to me, you know, why can't we, and I'm not usually a big supporter of these kind of things, but compared to Afghanistan, compared to the tax cuts for the billionaires, compared to it seems everything. like we won't do anything that's for the public good. Well, first of all, let's clarify what's, what the NASA budget is. Do you realize that the, the, the $850 billion dollar uh, uh, what was it, with the banks? TARP. TARP. Yes. Bailout. The bailout. The bank bailout. That sum of money could reach Venus. <laughs> <laughs> that sum of money is greater than the entire 50-year running budget of NASA. Wow. And so when someone says, we don't have enough money for this space probe, I'm asking, no, it's not that you don't have enough money. It's that the distribution of money that you're spending is warped in some way that you are removing the only thing that gives people something to dream about tomorrow. Do you, you remember the 60s? You remember the 60s and 70s? You didn't, you didn't have to go more than a week before there's an article in, 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 in Life magazine the, the, the home of tomorrow, the city of tomorrow, transportation of tomorrow, all that ended in the, in, in the 1970s. After we stopped going to the moon, it all ended. We stopped dreaming. And so I worry that decisions that Congress makes doesn't factor in the consequences of those decisions on tomorrow. Tomorrow's gone. You know what? We, we the, playing, the playing for tomorrow, metaphoric tomorrow, not the literal tomorrow. They're playing for the quarterly report. They're playing for the next election cycle. And that is mortgaging the actual future of this nation. The rest of the country, the rest of the world, is going to pass it by. That's, and, and that's the type of government investment that does have the multiplier effect. I mean, it, look, you just had a stimulus that didn't, didn't include it, and I think there were some management issues too. But you also had the TARP. So my point is that, yes, that's the type of program that we have historically have been a capital investment and had a multiplier effect. That's not what we're seeing today, and the reason is, is that we've, no offense, pissed away so much money in these stimulus packages. And by, by the way, it cost, it, there were budget, there was cost overruns. That, that's not a, uh, right. and, and that's yeah. bad. But, but, if there's a cost overrun on anything in this world, should we su be surprised it comes about on something that you've never done before? This is a telescope without precedent in its size, right. in its scale, in how deep into the universe it's going to reach to tell us about the origins of the cosmos and the, the, the engineering innovations that need to be brought to bear to make that happen. Speak it, Rev. <laughs> I'm just saying. I this, wish Dr. Cornell West was here to... This, Brother Neil. This is the America I grew up in. Hallelujah. And in it's the America I want to hand to my kids. But see, this is what we need, because we need a preacher of science. Because, like, this is the week... I guess it's... To, is it tomorrow that Rick Perry's... Uh, yes. Uh, Christ T'Challa down there in, in Houston... <laughs> No, I don't know if you... Christ-a-palooza. Right. Christ-a-palooza. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to step on 